This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald. Thank you for listening to this PowerCat podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode of the PowerCat podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast network. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a subscriber to GoPowerCat.com. We cover the Wildcats like no one else with our VIP customers enjoying one-of-a-kind coverage from our team of professional journalists. And sign up today for an annual subscription to GPC and grab a 30% discount on your first year. And now here's the PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat post-game podcast, presented by Caddyshack Golf, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig-Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the PowerCat post-game podcast from GoPowerCat.com and our sponsor, Caddyshack golf.com that's caddy with two t's oh brian hanley tim fitzgerald here in the wtc gig pirate studios following kansas state's 31 24 victory at mississippi state and brian let's just start off with a softball that's huge man what's that mean for the program well basically it's a huge stepping stone a huge momentum shift for the for the guys i mean it's one thing to beat teams that you're supposed to beat it's another thing to go on the road be an underdog come out on top and for the most part Tim we dominated the football game outside of some mistakes that's the thing that is very very encouraging because it wasn't our best effort all around because it definitely was not a clean game but it's a huge stepping stone because we play the uh, the well the offensive line really dominated. But as far as the program, as far as moving forward, it's a real, real big stepping stone for confidence to get the guys going in the right direction. It was quite remarkable. As I mentioned, we're sponsored by Caddyshack Golf, and something new in today's post game podcast we haven't done so far this season is someone who asks a great question. We've got some questions from Twitter and Wabash Station, our premium message board. Someone will be our question of the week and win a gift certificate for something unknown. I don't know what that means <laughs> from Caddyshack Golf. And Caddyshack Golf is uh, the sponsor of the PowerCat Pokes Game Podcast. If you're coming to town for a game, head to Golf USA on Fort Riley Boulevard for your Caddyshack Golf gear and other tailgate golf course needs. Caddyshack Golf is K-State owned. It's a local business. I, you know, we're going to also try to do something and make sure I, I do it right here, but I'm telling you what, Brian, there were so many big plays in this game. Yeah. So many big plays in oh, this yeah. game, but nothing quite as big as this. Here we go. Nice kick to the far side. Malik Knowles at the goal line, and he's going to run it out. He hesitated a moment. He's at the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He's in the open. He's at the 40-yard line. Near sideline midfield. Malik Knowles to the 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Put it on the board. Touchdown, Kansas State. Malik Knowles with the return. Just inside the start of the fourth quarter, Malik Knowles takes a game of special teams blunders by Kansas State and rescues the Wildcats with an enormous return. This was a game of weird swings and momentum, mostly because of mistakes, but that one belonged to K-State. They took over the game at that point. Even though it only tied the game up, they had more work to do. Malik Knowles. Wow. This freshman, redshirt freshman, came to play. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. That changed the game because Mississippi State dominated the entire third quarter. And it was mostly because of our mistakes, but they got it going on the ground. Uh, They made a change at quarterback, which seemed to – it's a good thing they didn't start this quarterback from the beginning because he was much better than the starter. And this really changed the game uh, right at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Got the momentum back to where it was kind of an even keel versus them having – Having all of the momentum, and it made a huge difference in just the guy's confidence. Yeah, it certainly did. And Tommy Stevens did start the game for Mississippi State. It looked like he was bothered by that shoulder injury he suffered last week against Southern Miss. He was 
just a little bit off. And I also think he got rattled by that K-State defense. He didn't expect to be hit. Yep. And, boy, they got they played in the backfield a yes, little bit they did. in this game and got after the quarterback. Yes, they did. It was real good to see. Guys were pushing guys around. I mean, like I said, for the first half, we dominated the football game. Right. I mean, we pushed them around on offense and defensive line. We owned it. And he got rattled. And, you know, we did what we were supposed to do. It's just we just had some mistakes, Tim, <laughs> that yeah. changed everything. Yeah, Kansas State could have gone in at halftime up oh. 17 or 21 to nothing. But instead, it was 17-14 at halftime because a couple of mistakes, including a Wayne Jones personal foul penalty when he hit a sliding um, Tommy Stevens. And, and at first glance, yeah. uh, I'm like, you can't call it. And then I saw it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you have to call that. Yeah. It uh, was a boneheaded play. Two personal fouls in this game by Wayne Jones. Not his best day at the office nope. when it comes to that. But that extended the final possession of Mississippi State at halftime before halftime, and then they got a touchdown pass from Stevens right before the final buzzer. And all of a sudden, a game that was owned by K-State is 17-14. And right there, Brian, are you worried that this game has slipped away and now Mississippi State owns the momentum? Absolutely. It's the old adage. You let a team hang around and hang around when you should be putting them away. And we had them put away because we literally just had to just pounce on it, just put our foot completely down on top of them. And not only did we let our foot off of them, we let it off. We got up over top of them and sat down next to them and, <laughs> and, and just started playing again. I'm like, oh, and I know that's part of learning. You know, the guys just trying to get, you know, trying to figure it out what they need to do and just to understand, look, you get a team down, especially on the road, you got to put them away because, yeah. you know, and we had that opportunity. And it looked like he was just in between on what he wanted to do, whether he wanted to hit him. Because he didn't just go destroy him. Yeah. He just kind of, I've fallen down. Okay, I'm going to hit him. I don't really want to hit him too hard. But you have to call it. And then it was... Uh, it was brutal. Just brutal. Well, like you said, Garrett Schrader, the freshman, did come into the game for the Bulldogs, and boy, he looked good to start with. He sparked them. All of a sudden, Mississippi State was ahead in this game at 24-17. It didn't look good for K-State, but I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch the film. I'm not sure what Scotty Hazelton changed in his defense, but all of a sudden, Schrader got a little more bottled up. It was his ground game that really hurt the Wildcats. He mm-hmm. ran 10 times for 82 yards, including a touch down a long run of 16 yards he's very mobile but once he had a few completions they changed something on the back end Schrader ended up four of 12 yeah in this he did. Game. so they, that was a struggle for him uh, and I, I tell you what I was really really impressed with this Kansas State defense throughout yes I was and you know what Tim I think part of it was adrenaline true freshman first time into a big game he gets in there he's because guys were covered he was just making good throws. And then all of a sudden, you know, he got rattled. We we just – we started playing – I don't think we played any better. I think we were just doing what we were supposed to do, and the guy got rattled. He's a true freshman. We did our job, and that's what we're supposed to do. I thought we played a, a very good game defensively. I know they got some, some yards. But you're going to get outrushed and out, you know, you, people are going to get more yards than you are when you have two turnovers without any offensive possessions. That's going to happen. We don't have a choice in the matter. Yeah, yeah, just uh, mistakes. In fact, uh, as I look at these stats, I think every one of these 24 points from Mississippi State came off of either a turnover yep. or a mistake like the late hit by by Jones. And here's the thing. They didn't play very well at times. No. But they played well enough to still win on the road at a 23rd ranked opponent in the SEC. I almost take away a positive from their mistakes in the fact that they can still win doing this. What happens? What's their ceiling when they clean that up and play like this? That's right. You have to take it as a positive because just watching the game, you knew that the offensive line played well. The defensive line played well. The defense in general played well, but the offense overall, we did not play. We made mistakes, and when you you don't play your best and you're able to go do that and go win, it's a real – it's the mark of a really – first off, it's a mark of a very well-coached 
football team because they didn't get down. They didn't they didn't turn on each other. They didn't relax and give up. They kept fighting. And if that's what's going to happen and we're going to be able to win when we're not at our best, when we are at our best, who knows where we're going to go. What does a coach say? This is from Contra Cat on Wabash Station. Well, to keep the players in the game and believing everything's okay when you have those big negative momentum shifts like K-State had numerous times in this contest. Well, it's it's partly in, you, in, in practice. You go through those those situations. You put yourself in those situations. Usually, it's the deterrent is guys. It turns into a conditioning drill if you you mess up and don't come through. But it's also just understanding do a lot of the mental aspect of it. Of guys, look, the game is not over. Keep playing go to the next play and I think our coaching staff does a very very good job of letting guys understand just move to the next play go to the next play and if you continue to do that because again it's not like we were down 40 points it was seven points we're in the football game we're right there we haven't played our best keep going just keep going Eric Williams asked this from Twitter. Uh, this is another good question. It's Eric eight one six Williams. Um, I uh, assume that's a <laughs> a uh, area could not wait. Eric looks much skinnier than that. Uh, K State will work on cleaning it up in terms of turnovers and penalty mis- mistakes, but do they risk losing its emotional edge that seems to be carrying them? How hard is that to sustain through a season? I don't think that it's hard at all. Uh, I I don't think that anything that what they did as far as is cleaning up the mistakes has anything really to do with the emotional edge because every good team is going to have an emotional edge. Every good team is going to build off that momentum. And also every good team is going to be able to win when you don't play well. That's where the difference is. I mean, there's, there's times when there is no emotion going on when, like I said, the third quarter was dominated by Mississippi State. But if you just keep playing, that's the key to being able to win games when you don't play well is just go to the next play. Keep fighting, keep fighting. And the guys did that. Yeah, they sure did. It uh, came down to really a third and long for Mississippi State. And uh, Kansas State was – their backs were against the wall, but they also – had to keep them out of the end zone, but first Mississippi State needed to pick up a first down, and Garrett Schrader went with his legs when the coverage was pretty good for K-State, and the K-State defense delivered. Wants to throw, has some pretty decent protection, rolls the pocket to the right, he'll run the ball, 30-25, spun into the air and down at the 20, a yard shy of the first down. Helicopter, but K-State stopped him. He went way into the air, but he's done at the 20, he needed the 19, first down Kansas State with 2.35 to go. That's Wyatt Thompson and Stan Weber on the Learfield Radio Network call of the game. We appreciate Learfield for providing highlights to us. Dude, that was huge. <laughs> it that, was, they came up and hit him. A great effort by the freshman quarterback. But they got him down. They got him shorter that first down. And really, then it was the ball game in case they just needed to wrap things up, so to speak. Yeah. It, when he first took off, I thought, oh, this is perfect. He's yeah. never going to make it. Yeah. And then he got closer. And cl- I'm like, hey, guys, where are we at? <laughs> it's like, hey, guys. And then when he jumped, I'm thinking – He's jumping from like six yards away. There's no way in the world. And then he spun. I've never, Tim, I've never seen a guy. I've seen helicopters in a game before. I've never seen it where it's a helicopter where the guy keeps moving forward. Right. And he kept moving forward. I'm like, hold on now. He's got to stop. Slow down. Uh, it was almost like he was a helicopter. Yes. Picking up altitude and yardage. Yes. I'm like, oh, my goodness. But. Great play. Uh, it was a great effort on his part, but great play by us. And, uh, you know, we won the game, salted it away at the end, and great win. We're sponsored by CaddyshackGolf.com. Get over to Caddyshack Golf. That's with two T's, C-A-T-T-Y, golf. Um, and go ahead and use the code GPC, and you'll get free shipping with your next order. I hope that code's good. <laughs> Brett, did you get the code ready? So uh, I, I just, I'm over the moon right now, Brian. I, I when they yeah. started making those mistakes, I thought this was over, this was done, and yet they persisted and found a way to win. Um, they're beaten up. I'm sure they're battered. It looked like Skylar Thompson was a little uh, not complete right. by the end of the game. Right, and uh, they played without Wyatt Hubert. 
This this program is in a really good position going into this open week. They are. They are. Um, you know, we'll we'll fix our, our, our bruises. That's okay. It happens. It's football. But for the most part, is again, our quarterback, Scott, he didn't have his best game. Now, he made timely throws, and especially that game-winning drive. He, you know, he got us to where we needed to be. But he didn't play his best. So if we're going to be able to do this when he's not necessarily at his best, now I'm not saying he played horrible because he didn't play horrible by any means, but he just wasn't as sharp. Now that's going to happen when you play really good competition. But for the most part, you know, I feel like we're, we're moving in the right direction. I think the break comes at a really, really good time. Um, and then we'll be ready to hit conference play and ready to roll. Some interesting stats from this game. If you felt like K-State's offense was pretty good, well, they only had 269 yards in this contest, only ran for 146. But again, this kind of proves what a good, powerful, physical running game can do. It was only 146, but they battered that Mississippi State defense yeah, they did. with those 35 carries. It was really fun to watch. Um, Mississippi State actually outgained Kansas State in this game with three 52. They beat them in uh, Mississippi State had 21 first downs to K-State 17. Uh, so in some ways, that Mississippi State uh, offense was better than Kansas State, but they were really good at taking advantage of those mistakes that I mentioned. That was really impressive what they did with that. And um, uh, But it started from the very start. They had to stop the run. Kylan Hill, their running back, is just extremely good, and they knew stopping him would not be easy, and they found a way to do it. Now, Hill ended up with more than uh, 100 yards on the ground, and um, I'm looking for a stat. Here I'm not finding them. There they are. 24 attempts for 111 yards, but it started from the very first snap of the game yep. with Jerron McPherson making a nice play. Tommy Stevens is your quarterback. Here's Kalen Hill, and he is pulled down for a loss back at the 19-yard line. Jerron McPherson leading the way for Kansas State. A big push for the Wildcat defense. Jerron McPherson was um, an unknown in that secondary. He was kind of a late addition in terms of who was going to be starting back there. And he came in and took that nickelback job from Jonathan Durham, who also saw some action in this game. But McPherson's pretty darn good. Yeah, He's added he a lot to that defense. Yeah, he is. Very, very physical. Was flying around. Um, he made a difference. I mean, he made a difference. You could tell uh, that he was ready to play. And, you know, being physical at that position, I think that's really what it comes down to and what we, we need it to be. And he was out there stopping the run. I know, like I said, I know that the stats, uh, the hill he ran for a lot of yards. But, again, some of those are kind of, I don't want to say lost yardage, but it's like, hey, when they got the two turnovers, they would he ran two, 11 yards, then 12 yards, then 9 yards. But for the most part, it was 4, 3, you know, 2. He didn't break off. I mean, there was no 25, 30-yard runs. It was nothing like that. So K-State defense played very well against the run. Yeah. Um, it, I, it really was. It That running game for them is so good and yep. so um, – they can be very diverse, but Hill has been absolutely unstoppable, and he ended up with decent numbers. That guy's an NFL running back, and yeah, K-State really did a nice thing on, you know, locking in on him and making sure uh, he was down on the ground. The gang tackled really well. They yeah. run into the ball so well. Uh, I really like what Scotty Hazleton's doing with his defense, adding aggression without going over the top. That's right. And not, it makes a huge difference. Not taking huge risks, but taking risks. Yes. It makes a big, big difference back there. But really, we can't gloss it over. Special teams is a concern. The kickoff return by Malik Knowles kind of saved the day, but really a series of muffed punts that they dropped, two of them that led to touchdowns. And Yo Mama, one of my favorite screen names, <laughs> asked, uh, will there be more emphasis on special teams, particularly the punt return team uh, during this off week? I would say there would be. But, you know, if you just really look at it, one, the guy, he dropped the ball. Uh, it was just, hey, it was a short punt. Uh, I'm sure instead of calling a fair catch, he should have just called a fair catch and dealt with it. The second one, we tipped the actual punt, and then it looked like we were going to try to make a play on it instead of making the play. Should have just let the ball bounce right. and just deal with it. You know, there was where I was watching the game, it just seemed like 
I don't know. It just seemed like we were trying to make a play, make a home run play when that wasn't what was needed to be made. You know, the hero ball that that wasn't needed. Yeah. It was just, hey, let's just go. We we already made the play. We tipped the punt. That's the play that needed to be made. We made that, and then just let the chips fall where they may. And it was like we were trying to take it to another level. When sometimes the simple thing is the best thing. Yeah, it was inexperience and indecision mixing on both of those yes. plays. Kansas State's return team, a punt return team, needs to grow up and grow up real fast because they can't make those mistakes. No. Again, as I said earlier, I'm astonished they won this game with <laughs> such glaring mistakes. But they did. They found a way. Kansas State 31-24, to winners in Starkville, Mississippi. No chant of SEC, SEC oh. after this one. It was pretty quiet, I would imagine. The Cowbells were silenced as the <laughs> Wildcats come home 3-0 and uh, into an off weekend before they open Big 12 play the following week at Oklahoma State. And we'll get into some of that and where this program's headed under Chris Kleiman when the PowerCat pregame podcast, sponsored by Caddyshack Golf, returns right after this. Stay locked in. The PowerCat podcast will be right back. Listen up. I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up! Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes! Now let's go win the sick playoffs! Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in, in a few minutes. <laughs> Instacart for the win. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits. Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash odyssey podcast. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC gig powered studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat postgame podcast, one of your daily podcasts from GoPowerCat.com, part of the Megaphone.fm 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. And this show is sponsored by CaddyshackGolf.com. Get over to Caddyshack Golf and put in the code GPC. Get some free shipping on your next order. Great K-State golf apparel uh, where you can find exclusive K-State golf wear. Check out their complete selection uh, complete collection exclusively at caddyshackgolf.com. That was not the greatest read you will hear in po- in podcast or radio <laughs> history. But who cares? Kansas State won 31-24. It's a big day, and I know K-State fans are awfully excited. If you're not a subscriber to gopowercat.com, uh, you probably want to be. You probably want to get in on the action that our VIP customers see behind the paywall. We do lots of free content if you're not in a position to subscribe. Subscribe, but if you are, you don't want to miss out because our content coming out of Starkville will be really, really good. The guys are cranking on it as we speak, uh, and uh, going forward, it'll be incredible coverage from my staff at GoPowerCat.com. Sign up today. I'll give you 30% off an annual subscription off your first year. Get over to GoPowerCat. Get that taken care of. Advertising done. Let's talk football. Um, I, I'm telling you what, buddy. Uh, this is um, This is really really tone setting and exhausted nihilist on Wabash station wants to know, did the message 
Did the Cats send a message to the rest of the Big 12 with this win? I think they did. Uh, I think what the message is is that we're a physical football team because everybody talks about the SEC and how physical they are. And whether you want to believe that's true or not, what is true is Mississippi State is a physical football team. And the Kansas State offense and defensive line, the Kansas State front seven pushed them around. Right. Uh, and the offensive line pushed them around. Now, the numbers may not dictate that, but, again, it was turnovers that kind of changed it. I know we got some turnovers, but, again, we technically had three uh, because we had an interception and then we fumbled it. You know, so yeah. – um, and that was another drive, you know, where they kept going. But with that the message is is that Kansas State is a physical football team. And if you're going to beat Kansas State, you better come to play – because we're going to punch you in the mouth. And not only are we going to punch you in the mouth, we can absorb your punch and punch back. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. Um, it, it, the way they were resilient, the, the change in culture, not to say that the culture was bad. The culture right. wasn't bad under Bill Snyder. Right. But this looks like old Bill Snyder teams. Yeah. We're in a dogfight, a lot of trash talking in that game. Did you like, let me see, this was a question from Wabash Station. Uh, and, in fact, if it's going to be our question of the week here, if I can find out who it's from. But uh, what did you think of all the trash talking? It was going back and forth. Nobody was really ever penalized for being too mouthy. But, um, yeah. And this is from Contra Cat. The chippiness, good or bad? The chippiness was okay. The The problem for me is is that it was a lot of pushing, a lot of pushing in helmets and things. Number one, first of all, it just depends on who the referees are because one ref may see it. Hey, you push somebody, they may throw the flag immediately, regardless of whether it was hard, soft. Another one, you can punch a guy. Yeah. So you just don't even want to get into that. Yeah. But the chirping and the back and forth, you like to see. And we didn't back down one bit. So you absolutely like to see. But the other stuff, you know, the hands, and not to mention you can, can get hurt. I know that sounds old schoolish and, and those type of things. But, you know, you don't want to get into that part of it. But the chirping, it was fine. And the guys, they, they held their own. Yeah, they did. Uh, Contra Cat, we will hit you up with our uh, little code that you will get for being our Caddyshack Golf Question of the Week. I loved it. Mississippi yes. State did get one uh, retaliation penalty. Uh, they deserved it on that. They deserved a couple others. There right. was one where John McPherson got his foot grabbed and, and pulled to the ground after he tackled someone. That was right in front of the official. Yep. So the, uh, to the credit of the Big 12 crew, which I thought did an okay job, I had some questions about a few calls, but overall pretty good. They let these guys play. They let these guys be aggressive, but they had boundaries, and they enforced them pretty consistently. They did, and that's all you can ask. As long as it's consistent. Consistent. You know, you don't want to see guys throwing three punches and nothing get thrown, and then somebody just gets in another guy's face without doing anything on the next play and then gets thrown out of the game. And I know we've all seen that happen. So as long as they're just being consistent, that's all you can ask for out of the refs. Uh, let me ask another, bring on another question here. T. Settler Stelter, excuse me, T. Stelter 8 from Twitter. After these three games where, no, where nobody expected us to look like this, what is now the ceiling for this football team? Do we have any grasp on what the ceiling is? I don't think we have a grasp yet um, because, again, the first two games, they're not throwaway games. I would never, ever say that. But they weren't against the best competition. We played against a good team today, but I don't, wouldn't – I would – I would venture away and stay away from ceilings as of yet, <laughs> or really at any time, because you don't know how good the guys can be, because that's why you keep practicing. Right. Like, you know, your guys are going to keep getting better. This is only the third week of the season. So looking at a ceiling, and I know what it is, they, we don't want our expectations to get out of control. But you know what? This is football. Let them get out of control. Have some fun. You know, think, think we're going to win every game. Want us to win every game. There is nothing wrong with that that's kind of what got at the end of coach snyder's era people were getting satisfied don't be satisfied people want to win every game expect to win every game and if we come up short we come up short but 
I don't think we want to just say, hey, where's the ceiling? There is no ceiling. Just keep going. I love it. There isn't. They, Who knows where this takes them. It does put them in an interesting position with this schedule. Maybe, maybe. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. Climbing is just a big of, of one game at a time guy, as Bill Snyder. Right. Most coaches are, but some coaches get caught up in looking down the road a little bit. Sure. Climbing doesn't seem to be that way. He's never been that way at North Dakota State. They're in a position, if they win the games, they're more than capable of, capable of winning to be 6-0 and when Oklahoma comes to town. That's right. It's uh, Now they got to go on the road and take care of business after an off week to Oklahoma State. But they are the winners at Mississippi State, 31-24, because of this play in the fourth quarter when Skylar Thompson found Dalton Schoen in the end zone. Second and five from the 15-yard line. Leonard's in motion. Back to the right he goes. Here's the fake handoff. Thompson rolling to the right. Wants to throw. A man open. Touchdown to Dalton Schoen. He throws the touchdown from 15 yards away. And with 5.37 to go, K-State is back in front, 30-24. to 24. It was wide open. Yeah, it was wide open. <laughs> yeah, it it was. was a great design by uh, offense coordinator Courtney Messingham. And, and I tell you what, Dalton Schoen was the leading receiver in this game. He only had three catches for 50 yards, but that one touchdown was huge. But I want to talk about Skyler. Thompson. Yeah. Uh, he he waited, he was patient, he had some pressure, he waited and that play developed and he delivered the ball. This kid wasn't perfect in this game. He didn't make mistakes. Other guys, other players were out there making mistakes. He didn't. Right. Um, but he seemed to pick his fights pretty darn well. He missed a Absolutely. couple open receivers. He had a couple drops. But that play with the game on the line, bingo, touchdown. It's all you can ask for. It's like I said, he didn't play his best. Uh, he was, wasn't as accurate. Could have put the ball a little bit better on guys and gotten more yards. But you know what? When the game's on the line, and you go out there and you make the play, all the other stuff doesn't matter. Because he went out there, he made the play to help us win the football games. Like you said, just pressure personified, stepped up, and made the play. Um, I thought at the end it was about as good as it gets. And I get caught up as a fan because you see it on the TV, right. and I'm looking, and I'm screaming, throw it, throw it, throw it, immediately because he was wide open of right at the snap. But you realize he's got to go through his, his progression and go through the fakes and um, – it was great. I, I loved it. I think he, I think he, he didn't play his best, but he played as good as he could when he needed to. Yeah, I tell you what, the color commentator on television made some nice compliments about how he was reading defenses and getting yeah. Oh, yeah. the cats into nice running situations and letting that play develop was just huge. Joshua York asked us on uh, Twitter here, J.H. York, uh, when we first heard Coach Kleiman at the press conference. Um, there had to be some doubts about the transition. Coach Snyder meant everything to this program. Sure. But did we ever imagine this happening? I didn't. I did not. Um, I thought we would struggle in one of the first two games that we played. Uh, I just right. thought that was going to happen. I was for sure it was going to happen. It happened in the last three years that we played. And I was just thinking that the same thing was going to happen, and it didn't. Um, you know, I'd kind of had some insight from, you know, I know a couple of people that are in the program and kind of let me know what was going on. And again, I've said it over and over. Some change is good. You know, right. change doesn't have to be a bad thing. And right. the culture change. And just because you say change, it doesn't mean that it was bad before. It just means it's different. Right. And this being different, um, I, I think is a good thing. And I don't. I couldn't imagine it being worse, or, or I shouldn't say worse. I couldn't imagine it being as just a bad feeling coming right. out. I thought it was going to be a really good feeling just because we were going to be doing things differently. So uh, I feel real good about it. I didn't think it would be this good, I'll be honest. <laughs> I really didn't. But now that it is, uh, I'm not looking back. No. No, there's no, there's no reason to worry right now, at least right now. Um, I tell you what, it's uh, – it's easy to win a press conference. We've yep. seen a lot of coaches win a press conference. By God, I'm old enough to know Stan Parrish won that press conference right. <laughs> when he was hired. And he had the, the ring from a what is now the FCS. It was 1AA at the time. National title from Marshall. So K-State's been down this road before, and it, it didn't pan out. Once he won his second game, I think this is 
right? Once he won his second game, Chris Kleiman had more wins than Stan had in three years. Ooh. So um, this is a totally different situation. But he also inherited some pretty good players, and he went out and found some good players. Skylar Thompson was 10 of 18, 123 yards, that one touchdown. He was sacked once. Big play by Mississippi State. Yeah, it was. Um, no interception. Skylar was just rock solid, not a superstar. But the Ball State transfer, James Gilbert, is clearly the bell cow right now. The running back by committee, well, someone got to do most of the speaking in that committee meeting. That was James Gilbert. He had 17 attempts for a total of 59 yards. Um, and Jordan Brown did have five attempts, 41 yards, and another touchdown. Harry Trotter, uh, five of t- for 25. Uh, the running game was good. It served a purpose, but I think we need to talk about something that we are uh, kind of passing over. That offensive line for Kansas State, they were men. They were men. They were men. Were they perfect? No. But from the very first play of Gilbert run, they set a tone in that game where we're going to be up in your face. They got to the next level consistently and knocked people around on that touchdown run. Tyler Mitchell was downfield picking up a linebacker. They were so good, Brian Hanley. Yeah. As an offensive lineman, you've got to be saying, oh, dude, that's just beautiful. Oh, it was beautiful. You know, and again, hat on a hat. Just like you said, the very first play of the game and some of the schemes that we're doing, you know, it's it's not really noticeable. You just see guys blocking here, blocking there. But it's the different way that we're blocking guys. You know, we pull a guy around and usually it's you pull, you block down, you pull around. Well, we're not doing that. It's more we'll kick out and guys will pull around. Around and the guy's blocking somebody from a different angle, and the defender has no idea where they're yeah. coming from, you know. And it's just different, and it's good to see. And but they are pushing people around. That's what's fun when you see the offensive line literally pushing guys around. It's one thing against the first two opponents that we played. It's another thing against a physical football team like Mississippi State, and we pushed them around, and, and we just did. They, they just pushed them around, and it was very fun to watch, especially for me. The stats don't show it, but I thought the offensive line was better in this game than they have been the entire season. They just, I mean, they were so much better than the other teams. I thought right. they were so physical against a really good opponent that it was clear they were the they were controlling they were. the tempo, and the defensive line played its best game of the season. Perfect again. No, but they were in the backfield on a consistent basis. Uh, Trey Deshaun put in an all Big 12 performance. Yeah, he did. He was a man out there. Yeah, it was did. just fun to watch. Uh, this this team, if you're going to win the line of scrimmage, they didn't inherit much from Bill Snyder. Recruiting had dropped, but what they got were just enough playmakers. Mm-hmm. They got a, a junior quarterback with experience, and they got good line. Yep. And if you got a quarterback in lines, you're in a fighting position, and K-State fought right at the line of scrimmage, and they won. The Wildcats won the line of scrimmage consistently, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Well, and another thing is schematics. Right. You know, you, you get into a different type of scheme, and you put your players in the best position for them to attack. It's kind of what we talked about last week. When you're attacking versus sitting back and reading – That makes a world of difference, especially with the type of personnel that you have. So that was what I think is is a big key because, again, as much as I talked about the offensive line pushing Mississippi State's guys around, our defensive line did not get pushed around at all. I mean, we were where we were supposed to be. Linebackers were fitting in their their spots where they were supposed to be. It was that was another thing that was refreshing to see. We got a little worn down in the third quarter, but when you're out on the field, pretty much the whole third quarter, and it's 150 degrees, you know that's going to take a toll on anybody. So no doubt. So K State uh, goes down the field on that opening possession. They get in a fourth and one, and they go for it. Right, what around the 20? Yep. Did you agree with that? I did. First, I did too. absolutely. I, I said, and I was yelling, go for it, coach, go for it, coach. I was like, why not? Here we are. I go, and we had it, you know, but their guys just made a play. That's all. They just made a play. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're on scholarship too. So it, I, I did not disagree with it at all. Thought it was very aggressive play calling, trying to set the right tempo. And I believe even though we didn't get it, it did set the right tempo. When you're dealing with a team like this that so believes in its coaching staff, even when that play fails, the fact that they had faith in you makes you feel like not that you were defeated on that play, but 
you let your coach down, and it almost motivates you even more. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you could kind of see it. You could kind of sense it because they came out the next drive and just destroyed them, you yeah. know, because they was like, okay, we got to make up for this because, you know, and the offensive line just went and pushed them around again. And so it uh, it definitely does, as a player, it, it motivates you even more. Knowing that your coach has your back and then you don't come through, then all you can think about is, well, I'm absolutely not going to let that happen again. Well, Kansas State got the ball back, as Brian mentioned. They went down the field, got to about the 19, and stalled again. And this time, Coach did this. Blake Lynch to kick it. Lynch in his career, 15 of 17. This one is on the way. It is high, and it is good. 3-0 in favor of Kansas State with 2.23 to go in the first quarter. It was impressive, K-State. Uh could have been up 14 nothing, 10 nothing at that point. Uh, they weren't, um, but you, it was clear who was running this game. Um, and then Landry Weber and Skylar Thompson hooked up on a huge play on Kansas State's following possession. Thompson with an empty backfield. There's the snap to him. Here come the dogs. Throw to the far sideline. That ball caught inside the 40 to the 35. And out of bounds, it's Landry Weber. First down, K-State. Big time player there by the Wildcats. And then it ended in this. Jordan Brown, who might have only got five carries today, yeah. Brian, but Man, I love this dude. I do, too. Runs hard. He, he had one of the muff punts. Shame on you, Jordan. <laughs> but he runs extremely hard, as you mentioned, and he made this huge play. First and goal from the seven for the Wildcats from the right hash. Thompson gets the snap. Hands it off to Brown. He's at the five. Cuts to the goal line. Wildcat touchdown. Seven yards for Brown, and it's 9 nothing purple with 13-31 to go before halftime. That was perfectly blocked. Touchdown, K-State. Wow, it, uh, right then I'm feeling really good. I think uh, K-State's going to run away, but Mississippi State's a good team. Yeah, They're they well are. coached, uh, and they capitalized on things, and they made Kansas State earn it. And my friend, they earned it. They earned it. It was great. Good to see, man. I'm excited. I am. Now, if you're a coach climbing, you're going into an off week, what do you emphasize? Do you kind of let your team heal up a little bit and take it a little bit easier, or do you get back to really grinding on stuff? Well, uh, as you know, I played under Coach Snyder. <laughs> so, like, Coach Snyder, there was no backing off. There was no healing up. There was no taking it easy. I mean, we practiced pretty much, I think it was, we practiced four days and then had, like, you know, about an hour and a half, two-hour scrimmage on that Saturday morning. So, there was no taking it easy. I don't know what the, the recipe is uh, because it worked for us, you know. Uh, but I don't know what the recipe is. But what I will say is back in those days, we didn't have the big, you know, the big game, the third game like they did now, you know, playing against a tough opponent. So and then the bye week coming right after that. So I, I think it'll be probably a combination of both. I mean, because you need both. You got to heal because you can't play well when you're hurt. Right. So you got The guy's got to heal up. Um, so but I, I, you don't want to take your foot off the gas too much. Because, again, they're kids. They'll take advantage of that. And our coaches know that. Yeah, this is uh, – you bring up a really good point. We're going to see – Exactly, maybe some of the compare and contrast that you have between Bill Snyder and Chris Kleiman with how he handles this off week. Right? Does he kind of rest his team up and let them adjust to? Um, you know, oh, that was loud. Uh, <laughs> let them adjust to um, what's going on with you know the season. Now we get to prepare for Oklahoma State, fellas. Let's get in here and we're going to start studying on the Cowboys. You know they kind of prepared extra for Nichols to get off to a good start in the regular season. And now uh, do they do that again with kind of start over? We're 0-0 in the Big 12. We're going to prepare a little bit extra for Oklahoma State. I think a lot of it will be fundamental type stuff. Right. Uh, because the first week is they'll look at it a little bit. It'll be more of self-reflection, though, because that's how you get better. Again, practice. So it'll be a lot of self-reflection, a lot of fundamentals, getting back to that. Uh, some people think that, well, we're just working fundamentals. You're not working as hard. That could be further from the truth. It's actually you're working harder when you're working fundamentals than versus when you're, you know, scouting and working against team things, of that nature. So you're working harder. So I think the guys will get better this week. Uh, and we did the same thing, you know, under Coach Snyder. It was fundamentals, and that was an everyday thing. Um, and every coach is going to do. You're going to work the fundamentals every day. So, but especially during the bye, it's a good way to get 
better without having to beat up on each other. Yeah, it's K State's in a really good position. Yeah. K State wins at Mississippi State, thirty-one twenty-four. The Bulldogs entered the game with a bunch of cowbells and a twenty-three <laughs> ranking in the nation, and they leave with a loss at home to a Big Twelve opponent. A significant win for Chris Kleiman and the Wildcats, and we will have all kinds of coverage at GoParacat.com. As I mentioned earlier, get that thirty percent discount on an annual subscription and get over to CaddyshackGolf.com and use the code GPC to get some free shipping. Our congratulations to Contracant for asking our first ever Caddyshack Golf question of the week. We'll get you hooked up with a gift certificate from them. And that is Brian Hanley, and I'm Tim Fitzgerald, and this is Wyatt Thompson to take us out. There's just five seconds to go as they stop the play clock. And Box now it's down out. to two and now one. And Kansas State has come to Starkville, Mississippi, and they have won the football game. They beat the 23rd-ranked Bulldogs, our final 31-24. to Don't look now, but Chris Kleiman's Cats are 3-0. and oh. Unbelievable victory on the road. They do it 31-24. You've been listening to the PowerCat Post Game Podcast presented by Caddyshack Golf. PowerCat Podcast, all rights reserved, gopowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing.